Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, count of interesting subarrays. The problem is very interesting application of prefix sum. If you have tried the problem but haven't thought in that direction, this is your chance. You can pause the video and try to think in the direction of prefix sum. So with that, let's get started. The problem states that you are given a zero indexed array nums and an integer modulo and an integer k. Your task is to count the number of subarrays that are interesting. A subarray is interesting if the value of count modulus modulo will be equals to k and where cnt is the number of indexes i such that nums of i modulus modulo equals to k. Right? So if a subarray satisfies this condition, it is an interesting subarray, we need to count the number of interesting subarrays. So let's take an example, let's say the given array is 3 to 4, we need to count the number of interesting subarrays. Modulus is 2, modulo is 2 and k is 1. So if you see there are three interesting subarrays here, first one is 0 comma 0. So if you see in 0 comma 0, there is just one element 3. Let's figure out the value of count. The value of count would be number of elements such that nums of i modulus modulo equals to k. So there is just one element. So let's see 3 modulus modulo which is 3 modulus 2 is equals to 1 which is equals to k. So basically cnt will be 1 for this subarray 0 comma 0. And we can also see cnt which is 1, 1 modulus 2 is also equals to k. And hence this 0 comma 0 is a valid subarray or is an interesting subarray. Similarly, there are two more subarrays 0 comma 1 and 0 comma 2. These two are also interesting subarrays. So let's just take 0 comma 2. So in this case, what is the value of CNT? Value of CNT is number of indexes such that nums of i modulus modulo equals to k. So in this case, uh, the first one has nums of i modulus modulo equals to k. Second one doesn't have it because 2 modulus 2 is 0 which is not equals to k. Similarly, for third one also doesn't satisfy this condition. Basically, 4 modulus 2 is 0 which is not equals to 1. So, the value of CNT for the subarray 3, 2, 4 is 1. And we can see 1 modulus modulo which is 1 modulus 2 is also equals to k. Hence, the subarray 3 to 4 is a interesting subarray. So, you can try all the subarrays and you will see only 3 of them are interesting and hence the answer here is 3. So, hope the problem statement is clear. Now, how to solve this? So, let's say you have this subarray, uh, this array and uh, these are the conditions you need to satisfy. The For every LR you are considering, you will find the count and see if count modulus modulo is equals to k or not. So notice how you are counting the value of count or how you are finding the value of cnt. Value of cnt is the summation of uh, is all the elements for which this condition is satisfied. right? So let's just convert the given array into a binary array 0 and 1 where 1 denotes that for this particular position the condition nums of i modulus modulo equals to k is satisfied and 0 denotes for that particular index i the condition is not satisfied. So in this case uh, nums of i is 3 right 3 modulus modulo which is 3 is equals to 0 and hence the condition is satisfied. So we put 1 here. Let's take this one. So in this case 7. 7 modulus 3 is 1 and 1 is not equals to k. Hence, the condition is not satisfied, so we will simply put 0 here. right? So, we converted the given array into a binary array. Now, finding out cnt for any range lr is straightforward. So, let's say you have to find out this value of cnt for this range l to r. So, what you will do, you will simply sum this array up and you will get the value of cnt uh, without do doing any of, the mod any of the modulus operations. You will just sum it up and you will have the value of cnt. So now on, from now onwards, we will work with this binary array and we will forget about the original array. We have, like we will assume that the given array 
we have converted to this binary array and now we have to find out the number of good or interesting subarray from this binary array itself so notice what we need to find or what we are interested in we are interested in all the subarray lr such that the sum sum of this subarray modulus modulo is equals to k right so sum denotes cnt so sum of this array modulus modulo is equals to k right so whenever a sum is involved at least once try to think in the prefix sum direction so what is the sum of prefix uh, of l to r it is prefix of r minus prefix of l minus 1 so you have to find the sum of l to r you will simply find the sum of everything from 1 to r and then subtract the sum from everything from 1 to l minus 1 right so we will simply do this prefix of r minus prefix of l minus 1 modulus modulo should be equals to k that's what we want we can simply take this l minus 1 to the right and rearrange the equation to something like this prefix of prefix sum of r or prefix sum up to up to the index r modulus modulo should be equals to prefix sum of l minus 1 plus k modulus modulo so there will be bracket here so plus k modulus modulo now this part is something you should be able to answer efficiently in order n right basically what this mean is for a single r all the l which satisfy this criteria are valid right so for a single r if you know which all l are there with this particular value those l's will be the valid candidate for this r and hence all those subarray which will be formed with that l and r are interesting subarrays right so what we will do we'll simply keep on maintaining the frequency of this expression uh, whatever is the prefix of l minus 1 plus k and we will for any r we will simply check the frequency array what is the frequency of this value and add it to the result so the entire algorithm would work in order n time right so let's just do a quick dry run of the algorithm to make it bit more clear so we have built the frequency array let's say you also have built the prefix sum array we don't actually require prefix sum array but let's say you have built this right now for this r we want to know what all else are valid right so that's what our uh, new problem statement is so we saw that for a particular r all the else which satisfy which uh, for which prefix of l minus 1 plus k modulus modulo is equals to prefix of r modulus modulo will be valid so in this case modulus is 3 right so let's just take the modulus of prefix of r so if you take the modulus of prefix of r this will become 0 this will become 0 right this will become 0 this will become 1 so we are just taking the modulus with 3 right this will become 1 this will become 1 and finally this will become 2 right so these are the final prefix of r modulus modulo now for this r prefix of r modulus modulo is 1 so we need to find out for which all indexes prefix of l minus 1 plus k modulus modulo is equals to 1 so what is the value of k k is 0 so let's just sum 0 as well to all of them right now if you sum 0 all of them so you will see only one index is there for which prefix of l minus 1 plus k modulus modulo would be equals to 1 and hence for this r there will be only one possible value of l right so you will, you will do the same for all the r's so let's just start from the beginning let's say we start from the beginning and we maintained our uh, array as well right so we don't need to fix them we have fixed them already so we maintained our frequency array we encounter there is nothing before this right so basically we have a zero sum before this so let's say you need to uh, calculate you need to consider this array this subarray so what will be the value of this subarray the value of this subarray would be prefix of r minus prefix of l minus 1 so this is l 
L minus one would be the previous index, which is before zero. So for this index is also a valid index, right? So we will also keep on. We will also consider this index in our frequency as well. So what will be the sum up till this index? It will be zero, right? But what we want, we want to figure out all the else for which prefix of L minus one plus k modulus modulo is equals to prefix of R modulus modulo. So we want to maintain the frequency of this expression, right? So currently the prefix sum is zero, k is also zero. So zero plus zero is zero. Zero modulus three is zero. So we'll say we there is one index for which prefix of L minus one plus k is zero, right? Now we move forward. So we reached at this particular index. So for this particular index, prefix of R modulus modulo is one. So we will see for this R which all else are valid. What all else will be valid? Basically, we'll simply look at this particular index because this array is built on top of this expression, right? So we are not adding prefix sum of L minus one. Instead, we are adding prefix sum of L minus one plus k to this array, right? So this array is built on top of this expression. So we'll simply look at this array. The value, the frequency of one is zero. So we'll say there is no R at all. There is no L possible for this R. So we will move forward and try out this particular R. Right now, for this one, the prefix sum. Uh, before moving forward, we will add back the contribution of this as well. So for this, prefix of L minus one plus k modulus modulo would be equals to one. So the frequency here would be one as well. Right now we move forward. We reached here. Again, for this, what all values L will be there? Nothing because frequency of two is zero. So there is no valid L at all. So we will move forward, and before moving forward, we will add the contribution of this to the array as well. Notice we are adding directly because k here is zero. If k is something else, we need to add that k as well, right? So currently k is zero, so that's why we are just adding the frequency of two here. Now again, this one. For this, we have to figure out all the valid Ls. So we will simply look at the value or the frequency at two. It is one. So basically, there is one valid L. So there we found one subarray. Which is interesting, and what is this subarray? This subarray would be this one, right? So this is the first subarray that we got, and before moving forward, we will simply take it and increment the frequency as well because k is again zero, so two plus zero is zero, two plus zero is two. Now finally, for this three, uh, for this zero. We again look at the frequency of zero. It is one. So we found one more subarray, which is interesting. And uh, if you see, this has the value zero. So we found this subarray, right? And if you look at this subarray here, it indeed has three sum and three modulus three would be zero, right? So we found one subarray, one valid subarray. So total, we found two subarrays till now. Now we will move forward. Before moving forward, we will increment the frequency of two, a uh, frequency of zero. So we'll keep on doing this, and finally, this result is something which is, which will denote the total number of interesting subarray in the given array, right? So as you can see, we are simply maintaining this map and incrementing frequency of frequency in the map one by one, as and when we are moving forward. So we are iterating over the array once and maintaining this map. And incrementing the frequencies in each iteration. So overall time complexity is just order n, right? And space complexity would be the order n as well because in worst case there will be n distinct element in the prefix sum plus prefix sum plus k would be n distinct element. So this frequency array can grow up to order n size. So the time complexity is order n, space complexity is also order n. So hope this entire solution makes sense. If uh, you have watched till this point again i would encourage you to pause and try to code and get this problem submitted by yourself so next we're looking at the code the code is straightforward we will maintain the prefix sum so we are not maintaining the prefix sum array because if you see we don't really need the array itself we just need we are only looking at this frequency array right so 
For prefix sum, I'm not maintaining the array. Instead, I'll just maintain a variable, which denotes the prefix sum up till this point. And this is the final result, which is the number of interesting subarrays that uh, we want to return. This is the frequency map. And uh, as we uh, initially, the sum is zero. So zero plus k is equals to k. So k modulus modulo, we incremented the frequency by one, right? Now, once we have done this, again, uh, just to re re recap, this part is to make sh take care of this particular zero because for any subarray that starts at zeroth index, prefix of L minus one will be the index before the zeroth index for which the sum will be zero. So since the sum is zero, so prefix of L minus one is zero plus K is zero plus K is K and k modulus modulo we incremented the frequency basically we have one index for which prefix of l minus one plus k has this particular value now once we do this we will iterate over the array notice that we have to figure out the actual element here either zero or one based on nums of j modulus modulo equals to k or not now once we find find out the current element we will simply find the prefix sum modulus modulo and uh, for this particular r we simply look at the frequency of that element and that that many number of l's are possible for this particular r so that many sub arrays are possible for this particular r so we'll simply add that to the result and finally before moving forward we will add the contribution of this element to our frequency array as well so notice for adding we will add back the contribution of prefix sum of L minus one plus K. So that's what we have done. Prefix sum plus K modulus modulo. We will increment that frequency by one, right? Uh, finally, this result will contain the total number of interesting subarray that we will return as an answer. So hope this entire solution makes sense. If you have any doubts in this problem, feel free to post them in the comment section below. I would be able to answer. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you are not already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.